When this film was taken in the 1920s, the Heath Hen was already in trouble. Its numbers were down to 500 birds, all located on one island, Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. In the spring of 1916, a terrible range fire swept through the island, killing most of the chicks and hens. Soon after, the island endured a severely cold and wet winter. The birds' numbers eventually declined to 12, 10 males, and 2 females. By the late 1920s, the heath hen would be gone forever. This is an Atwaters prairie chicken. The Atwaters is a relative of the heath hen, but they share more in common than their heritage. The Atwaters is on the brink of extinction. Their problem is they no longer have a home. The prairie on the Texas Gulf Coast is virtually gone, wiped out by farming and by urban sprawl. As the prairie has disappeared, so have the Atwaters. Today, less than 500 of the birds remain. Yes, each one is exciting because each one is, a, is another hope for the survival of the species. If, if, if Texans can't understand the uniqueness of this natural treasure, it's going to be gone before they know. Here in his labs at Fossil Rim Wildlife Center, Bob Smith is the first person to successfully breed at Waters Prairie Chickens in captivity. Right now, it's the last ditch effort. If we can't do this, then they will be gone. And they will be gone forever. Come on, guy. Come join the world. I got involved because it was a challenge, and I really enjoy a challenge. And it's a species that needs a lot of attention. It's been ignored for too long. People in the state, you ask most of them, they've never even heard of the bird. God. Yeah, he took a whole leaf. Unluckily, it's always been labeled a prairie chicken, so they hear chicken. They're not real excited about a chicken. But to me, it's been one of my greatest natural history adventures I've ever uh, observed. Nice shadows moving around, nice big red blood vessels. That's what I like to see. This year, from the three hens we had laying, we collected 50 eggs. So that one has died. Nobody home. And out of those 50 eggs, we should be hatching uh, close to 30 chicks. Still alive. Four more left. I'm very optimistic. Uh, we've proven one point clearly that they can be kept in captivity and they can be bred in captivity. The chicks hatch and do well for several weeks. But then something mysterious happens and they start to die. The main stumbling block for the entire recovery program now is rearing techniques, survivability of the chicks. God, I hate these long needles. There's no telling what the problem could be. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've worked with birds for 20 years, and I, it, it doesn't make sense what's going on. It's not a management problem. There's something else occurring that we just haven't been able to pinpoint yet. Trembler? I think so. God, that's just too hot out there. It's, I mean, it's well above 100 degrees out there, I bet. Well. God, he's awfully damn hot. We might just bring him back in here. Or leaving him out there in this heat might hurt him. Going out there to pick him up and bring him in might hurt him. Yeah, let's bring him in. Well, look, he's out there eating. <laughs> you know, it's like... He looks a little bit wobbly. Oh, he doesn't know whether to stand up or lay down. Let's bring him in. Let's see if he cools down in here. You grab his water and his food and I'll get him. I 
I can just imagine, you know, I'm probably over reacting. I can imagine the temperature at the coast right now, it's a lot higher than it is here. And the birds in the wild are probably suffering from a lot more heat stress. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. They just love dandelions. This is an endangered species from my own backyard. This is something I'm doing for Texas. It's not, it's not an endangered species from another country that I might not see the immediate effects of working with. This, in just a few short years, will be reintroducing them. Reintroduced means that the birds will be released into the wild. The captive breeding program here at Fossil Rim is essential because... If we don't have any birds for restocking habitat with, the birds are just going to disappear. There's no way currently for the remaining population to expand into usable habitat. There's, there's too much urban disturbance between the populations. They've been uh, separated by too many miles and, and too much uh, construction between them. Gotta go, gotta go. Little bird humor. It's so unique to be out there at the booming grounds and it's pitch black and the prairie is silent. Then suddenly it explodes with the booming calls of 15 or 20 male prairie chickens and it'll go on for hours, these birds strutting, calling back and forth, trying to attract a mate. It's, it's an incredible sight, something that uh, hasn't been seen by but a few Texans. At the turn of the century, one million atwaters roamed the prairies. By 1930, their number was down to 9,000. In the spring of 1994, only 156 atwaters were left. At this rate of decline, the atwaters would be extinct in the wild by the turn of the century. If they can't care about the atwaters prairie chicken, then they can't care about the prairie. If they don't care about the prairie, they, they really don't care about the environment. And once the environment's gone for, for the wildlife, it leaves very little for man. Once it's silenced, it's going to be silenced forever. There will be no more booming calls heard along the coast. It's what you're supposed to be eating. In the summer of 1994, the captive breeding program made a breakthrough. In the next couple of years, hundreds of atwaters could be released onto Texas Gulf Coast prairies. Whether the species will be saved is still a question. But at least for now, there is a hope for the Atwaters. A quote from an African naturalist who uh, said, as far as conservation goes, we will conserve what we love, we love what we know, and we know what we're taught. And if no one knows what an Atwater is or what's happening to it, it's going to disappear.